Hey, what's up, YouTube? I'm here with Eric, who did a thing. He got second place at what you do? It was the online regional with Magna Carta with over 388 players. And this is like your, this is your second top getting second place with green. Yes, I um, think that green is probably one of the better meta calls at the moment, and it is still something to be feared about. And how was your matches, you would say? Um, for the most part, um, there's been a very big resurgence of Rookie Rush, so Green naturally has one of the better matchups for it. Um, Lord Nightmon, it can go here, it can go either way, um, but against any of like the Rogue decks, especially more of purple or red, this deck doesn't just goes right through them. So, and it's good though. Who says that judges cannot play? You heard for, that again. For real, yes, judges can play because we can read cards. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see the deck. All right, it starts with, of course, the classic for Yokomon, just because you're going to digi-burst it away, just gets the extra power boost. And then for the fifth egg, it's just the spare Argomon that whenever your Digimon unsuspends, gain extra memory. A lot of times, if you leave it on the field and I just digi-absorption on it, if you can't gill it, I can usually get the extra memory for free. Rookie lineup, kind of straightforward. Four of the jamming Palmon. Does its thing when it gets Digiburst, give it jamming. Three of the starter deck Tentamon runs reveal. This actually is super helpful because even though, yes, you're playing the Chaos Mons, this is still generally live most of the time for this, the free draw power. Mm -hmm. And then three Terriermon because Hexblow is a deck. Same thing with Yellow with Blinding Rays. It forces them to have to waste an option or some sort of out to kill a Terriamon. And then we got three just two-cost Argomons, just for memory choking. And then two of the BT5 Palmon. Um, this card came in super clutch because people will often forget that this card can add itself to another source. So if I have a hard play rookie on the field, and then you delete this, put it underneath this, for cost of one memory, I can nidhog your entire field. So how many times have you done that? I did that probably at least three or four times throughout the event. And yeah, this Palmon is really good. It makes pretty much any stack still alive for a nidhog. So that's good. And on to the champions. Got four Weedmon. Um, just great low cost. Did you burst gain one memory? Pretty straightforward. Four of the one cost blockers, just because great for climbing up evolutions and it's a blocker. Um, only got two of the one cost Vegemon now, just because he's still great for the one cost and for if you brick, he's only a four drop. And then my personal favorite for level four is Togemon. Um, I know a lot of people have kind of gone away from this, but the fact that it can add any level five or higher, so this can even add Chaos Mon to your hand. Um, Really, really great because a lot of people just don't see it coming. And if it does actually hit something, which over half the deck is live, it really just... So it helped you out a lot, though. Yes. The amount of times I added Chaos Mon off of it and people would ask, is that possible? It's like it's ask at any level five. Yeah, because it doesn't say, like, just green. Yep. It's one of those few cards that just is very vague. And then on to the level fives, the ultimates. I only play three Blossom on. Yeah, um, you don't play four. Mainly because of some of the only other choices for in the rest of the deck. It's Digisorption, Digi still really good. But the reason why is because I still play the two Cherry Mons just for the two cost evolution. Mainly because having just the memory choking ability as well as it's just a blocker that I can sit on. It definitely helps, especially against Rookie Rush still. And then two Lylamon. Really great card just for setting up for... If I digivolve on top of it and I have the Mimi, I can suspend something and be able to Nidhogg for free. Otherwise, um, Digiburst, it's Flower Cannon on legs. It's really helpful for just spot removal. And then, of course, the one Argomon. On to the level sixes. I do play the three Nidhoggs. Um, it speaks for itself. Probably the most powerful green card, in my personal opinion, outside of um, HPD. This card is board wipe for low cost, and it's a really big beater. And it's scary. Yes. Um, I played two Reflejamon, just because it's a very solid card that can extend plays. It actually came up a few times I played against um, people who were just hard-dropping Hexblow for no reason. 
Um, and then with a Nidhogg, he can't do anything, but just Digivolve Reflesia on for one, and then it's still a live to battle target. And then just being able to stun Lord Nightmons with its Digiburst ability really helps. And then two, Grand Quagga, just for that way, the OTK potential, just being able to swing for three, especially if they're playing mostly around the other two Megas, this thing just really still is a powerhouse. How many times did that games for you? Um, it only came up once or twice, but being able to give the plus one security still was still a really big factor. And then I play the two of the Chaos Mon with Piercing. It is what it is, spot removal, and it just has the ability to put pressure. And then one Valder Arm. Um... Valder Arm was really important because the moment they started seeing me play, like, the OTK part of it, they would start to just go wide. And, and this just really them. helps punish people just who go too wide if they would feel they're safe just sitting on two blockers, so. Hmm. And then, classic package, just play the two Mimis. Um, I tried three at one point, but really did not like it because I kept seeing either too much in my hand or it's just... It just wasn't enough. I only really need to see one in the game, and to be honest, throughout the entire event, this card was pretty much glued to my hand for some reason, so I can't complain too much. And then two Needle Sprays and one HPD. Pretty standard package. I can be able to get rid of a Prom Child with this, the mid -hog it, and then HPD just to make a whole bunch of cards cost basically zero or one. And let me see. What did you lose to? I know you went X1. My only loss was to a Lord Nightmon deck round seven, and and it was in three. It just basically just the resources. He just managed just to keep swinging with Lord Nightmon and just put the kept the pressure on me. Mm -hmm. But ironically enough, I did place higher than him, so I had better tiebreakers overall. So yeah, you did have the higher tiebreakers. Yep. And then yeah, just played a lot of Rookie Rush. So Rookie Rush is definitely a deck that can still come out of nowhere. Um, but the event was a lot of fun, very tiring. I believe it. Any shout outs you want to give? Um, obviously, a shout out to my team, Team uh, Nameless. We're definitely up and growing. Obviously, a shout out to all the people who are in the in the judging the webcam events. We can play. We can still do good. And then, of course, um, just a shout out to my fiance, who's been my practice buddy for uh, making me so that way when I can't make it out to local, I can at least get some practice in. So. Okay, remember to look out for Team and Nameless and Lustry's Games, too. Yep. Check out their Facebook group. We are in there. Thanks for taking profile, Eric. Thank you.